Testing. Okay, cool. That's that. What is this? All right. What? That's weird. So weird. Okay. What the hell? Oh man. Okay. All right. I think we're good. Okay. I already think I'm good. A little too hot. <sighs> Let's see about this. Ah, it's the same. All right. So I am going to probably add rain to this scene because I like this scene. This was like the first, this was the earliest probably Akira thing that I did. And it was like made just as a test. And this was really, the test was this. Like exactly what you see. This part. So, yeah, I don't know. I like it. So I want to just like add rain to it and change the colors up and just see how that looks. So just jump right into it because this was one of the this was one of the earliest ones and uh <laughs> oh shit it's jason <laughs> what's up lana what's up jason all right so let's see mm. yeah I think I'm gonna have to go through the colors and just change them one by one. Let's just start with the big one. Oh, let me let me open up the viewport here. Go like that. All right. Nice. Damn, it looks sick. Actually, I like that a lot. Just seeing it with like the purple and the blue, actually. I like that a lot, actually. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me go to the camera and adjust the... Where's that? Where's that, like, Pasporto thing? Here we go. Yeah. I actually like that a lot. Dang. That looks cool. Uh, Hold on. Hold on. Give me a second. What? Where? Okay, one sec. Let me. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna try to put music on, like, cause I had um, I didn't have music last time, but I remembered that I I have like a like a subscription to some music like that I think I can play on uh that I think I can play on when I live stream. So let me try that. Let me try playing that. I hope I can. Um hold up. I think it was this. I think it was this. Let me set the headphones up. Okay. Let me see if I can play. All right. That's playing through my headphones. There we go. It's a little bit loud for me. Uh, let me see if I can just turn it down here. I 
actually can't tell if it's playing through the headphones or not. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna troubleshoot. Okay, I think it works. Uh, I'm gonna try one more time. Uh, I'm gonna try one more time. This is getting weird. This is getting weird. Oh no. This is getting weird. Oh no. <laughs> All right, the music feels super loud for me. <laughs> The music feels super loud for me. The music feels super loud for me. <laughs> I'm turning it way down. I'm turning it way down. I'm turning it way down. How? Okay. 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 Okay, I think we're good. I'm just trying to like balance out the level between me talking and um Yeah. But I think we're good. I think what I have to do is I have to just turn it up on the on here a little bit. And then yeah, I think I'm good. Hey, what's up, Z3D? It's good to have you. It's good to have you here. I'm happy to see you. I was just figuring out the like music to voice uh, settings. Let me know if that sounds okay. I want to make sure like you can hear it, but it's not like I don't know distracting. I can always turn it down. I also don't want it to be super loud for me either. But let me know. I'll keep an eye on the on the chat if you want to let me know. Also, let me see about this. cool I guess or does it look creepy maybe like an orange that's interesting how that looks not green because that's green for me hmm. let me double check again yeah that's so weird it's like green but I guess it's getting cancelled out what's the yellow kind of that's green. That's red. Oh, you know what it is? It's, I see that. It's like that. Okay, whatever. We're good. We're set. Yeah, I really like this. I love, I love the purple and blue. I might just keep that. Let me change the background and see if that makes a... You know what be interesting is to try to make it daytime because I bet that would look cool. I'm kinda I'm kinda rocking with blue. I like blue. Oof. That's nice. 
You guys ever have coffee and then get like heartburn? I don't know, maybe it's just me. I never know what to do about that. What's up? Damn. It's a CDX, right? CDX? Is that how I say it? I just started doing them. I just started doing them. I think I did one last week and then it went well, so I'm doing it again. I want to like do them more because I, I tend to like work on projects and then as I'm working on it, kind of like share the progress on socials, but um, it's, you know, I just figured like, why not just live stream the stuff that I work on because then it's less work, you know, for me. Is it C Dix? Am I saying a name wrong? Not like C Dix, like S E A D I C K S. But <laughs> tell me if I'm saying how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make fun, but that's how it sounded as soon as I said it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to have you though. I'm glad, I'm glad to see that you're here. I always see you pop up on like, on TikTok, but never. Oh, okay, it's German. A robot does it perfectly. Let me try it. German Google. I didn't know you were German. Let's see. Cedix. <laughs> that's CD. Oh, that sounds way different. CDX. See, because, like, if I do, um, hold up. Um, so here, if I do like that, CD, it's like C, C, wait, hold up. CD. 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 CDX. CD. CD. If I do English. CDX. Mm hmm. CDX. Oh, that's different. Okay. CD. I like it. City. It's like city, both a D. <laughs> Um, my PC specs Z3D, it is, um, I thought I could have sworn I, 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 I put that information somewhere. Uh, I have an old, uh, old video on my reels that shows what specs I have, but it is essentially, hold on, this is like somehow still too loud for me. Um, I think i7? And then, uh, so it, Intel i7, 3080 Ti GPU, and then 64 gigs of RAM. That's really like the main the main parts. So even it's even considered old school with the whole 4090 stuff out there. Whoa, I like that a lot. That's nice. Change this. Make it like no. Yeah, this like makes me look like I'm dead. Okay. I'm using Google Translator. You're using Google Translator. I'm a beginner in learning Blender, and I really appreciate you sharing the process. Awesome. That's really good to hear. Let me see. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Well, since we have it, actually, what language are you using Google Translate for? Because I could just speak to you through Google. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, actually. Like, I know that maybe, like, this is not exactly beginner stuff. Um, but if you, you know, if you have any questions or if you want to see something specific or, like, if you're curious about something, I'm more than happy to share it. You're rocking a nice machine. 
I tend to rely on render farms. Damn. Well, yeah, that's true. I Do you use cycles or do you use EV when you're rendering? Because I've definitely had to use a render farm before, but if I'm doing like personal work, I probably cycles. If I'm doing personal work, I just, I don't, I have less of a standard for quality, I think. Um, I would say try using EV. I mean, I'm, I'm, all of this stuff has been with EV and it's been a lot of fun, like pushing it. I don't have to use EV. I, I can obviously like do cycles. Um, actually like I'm curious. This might slow down my computer for a second if I do cycles. Yeah, the value metrics are just gonna kill it. Let me turn them off. Oh, there's more value metrics in here. There we go. So this is how it looks in cycles. And then, I mean, uh, in some ways it looks really, really good because it's like really sharp and stuff. But I mean, I think for this using EV looks better because it's a lot more better and faster with like bloom and artist art art direction. But yeah, yeah, render farms are definitely convenient. They can just get kind of expensive. Um, I I when I do my renders with e, uh, with cycles, I usually keep the like I can show you the settings that I use. I'm, I'm gonna turn off all the volumes again because they're gonna go crazy. Oh god. Let me turn this off. So this is how it looks. I rendered these are my settings, so like noise threshold 0 0.2 and then max samples 256 and then denoise. I don't know, I feel like there's always gonna be some kind of like noticeability or whatever with the denoiser, but I don't care and I think most people don't notice that stuff I was talking to somebody else like most people don't really notice the denoising like it's just there and there's also like if you put noise on top of it in like a video editor it helps hide that noise as well or the denoising so you can probably get away with just like rendering at like like what I what I did is I would try rendering like this I would go like one sample and just see how that looks when I render it. So how do you think it's gonna look at one sample? Do you think it's gonna look bad or do you think it's gonna look good? Like with just one sample? Let me see. This is 1080, 1920 by 1080. One sample. All right, that's done. You just apply the, like the bloom and stuff. That took like nine seconds. I mean, if you had like a like a weaker computer, it would probably take like 20 seconds or something. But even at one sample, like this is okay. It's a little blocky, sure. It's got the, uh, hold up, it's got like the, it's got this stuff if I turn this off. You know what I mean? Like if, if, if me as a digital painter, if I was gonna just, if I was rendering something to paint over it, this would be, perfect a perfect amount of stuff because it, it even looks a little painterly which i think is cool like it looks a little like blurry in some spots and i think that looks cool as a painter like this would be a really fun image to paint over but it also has enough detail that you like know what it is um so let's go to slot two and do like 12 samples i'm just gonna see if there's like a major difference it's going to take a little bit longer, I think. I kind of don't like how I have to watch a 30 minute YouTube tutorial to make glass transparent. You know. Hey, thanks, Rage. I remember your old videos of like your setup and your final render was one sample. Yeah. Hey, what's up, John? It's good to see you in here. We're just uh, doing experiments real quick, like as a side conversation about like using cycles and, you know, I, okay, so I personally don't, like when I do my personal work and I have to render with cycles or I choose to, I don't set the sample super high. I don't, 
there was like a there was a cool video that I think even Blender Guru did or somebody or Polyfjord where they're like I rendered it at 1080 and then up using an AI upscaler to upscale it. So you could even do that. You could render it at like 50% the scale of 1080 and then just like upscale it by half or whatever or by two. So here's the here's one sample which like looks it doesn't even look like you would think one sample is just disgusting. And this is 12 samples. So yeah, it's like it's a bit of a step up. But like the only difference is like contrast, I think. Like it's a little like this one's a little bit like yeah, like yeah, this part is probably a little bit cleaner. But when you see this, like it doesn't exactly look wrong. You know, you still see the shape, you still see the colors, you still see the shades and stuff. This line looks weird. It's got like weird like anti-aliasing or something. But like I don't know. There was like a video that Blender Guru did a long time ago where he talked about the differences in like rendering on different samples. And he said there's a certain point where like it doesn't even make a difference or it's like hardly noticeable. And Ian Hubert on his Patreon has a really good video about how he renders in cycles and all of the kind of tricks and things he does. And like he really goes in deep into understanding how light works and everything and how it like how it denoises. And he has some like basically, if you just fill it with a lot of light, use an HDRI or something like that, you're not gonna have issues with the rendering and you can render it less samples. Um, yeah, but I just, you know, if, if you're if you're just making content for yourself and it's just for fun, like, you're not, it's not like a portfolio piece. I think you can, you can get pretty similar results with EV if you just like, You'll have to adjust the lighting and stuff. Sometimes you have to make the lighting a lot stronger. But I mean, just look at video games. A lot, All of the video games have like, it's not path traced. It's all like ray traced, which is what EV is. So like, you can just, if you if, you're, if your renders can look like a video game, like Cyberpunk or any of your favorite video games, that means you can get achieve that effect in EV. And like most video games look good and most people are not like, that doesn't look realistic, you know? Sometimes realism doesn't even come from like the sample amount. It comes from just like other things we associate with realism, like textures or like, you know, props, things like that, or like camera movement. Sometimes things look more grainy and they look more realistic, you know? Like they look more grainy, they look more like artifacts and stuff on them. And they somehow look like, like, I don't know if you've seen those like videos where people add like a VHS filter on a render and it looks like a real video. So you can go in the other direction and kind of experiment with that, which I, I encourage, I think that'd be really fun. And I, I kind of did that with the, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. I did a video, uh, actually it was on my socials. Let me just pull it up. It was this, so uh, it was this video. Oh. So this was like, I think this was rendered like 256 samples. I don't even know, but like it's a ton of motion blur. It's a ton of like, there's no depth of field in this one, but it's like grain, there's lack of light. I think it looks pretty realistic. Like it's camera shake. It has other elements. So some parts make it look not real, sure. But for the most part, it looks more realistic than like an average render. And I think it's not because the sample count is high. The sample count's really low. There's a there's like other other just a lot more other factors that you can look at to making a render look good or realistic or whatever. Other than sample counts. I think sample count is just very like numeric and it's easy to measure. So you can be like more samples means more realism versus like some more creative and abstract things that can make something look more realistic that are a little bit harder to measure or to like, you know, like put a number on. But it's, it's super fun just like trying to make things look realistic and exploring like almost the psychology of why people think, why people think certain things look realistic. There's a whole thing about like the flash light that makes things look realistic. Uh, there's an artist. <sighs> I'm trying to find him. Yeah, this guy, Oleg uh, something. 
don't know if I can like, his stuff is like super gross and creepy and stuff. But like, he has like really cool, let me try to see, let me try to find like what it is. I mean, this is probably, I think, I guess the best thing I can show, but you can see like the lighting is like a flash. This is a painting and it looks pretty real. And there's like uh, like other realistic things like proportions and like folds and stuff. But for the most part, it's a pretty abstract painting and it looks realistic because of the lighting because it's got this like glow at the bottom from like the overexposed light. And then it's got this like really direct shadow from like it being a flashlight. You see the shadows are just almost like thick outlines because the shadow is like directly behind the object that is casting the shadow. And this was a big inspiration for that creepy video that I did because I really wanted to mimic that kind of lighting because I think that it makes it look more realistic. Here's another one. Like the way that their uh, safety things are lit up is the way that it would look if you shined a light onto it. So just those kind of details and how it's really dark up here. It just, yeah, it looks like a, I, I would say there's a, yeah, there's like a fun experiment to have there with making something look realistic. So, where were we? Oh yeah, gotta get out of this cycles thing. It's gonna slow us down. I like this so much. Like this looks so cool. But there's a weird, there's like a weird line right here. You see that like, that line? That's the other thing with Eevee is that it, it can sometimes behave differently depending on um, like the clipping distance or something like that, like the viewing distance of the camera. So here it's like a thousand. It like changes. I don't know when you, when you change it, it changes. Yeah. You see like, um, these weird like artifacts and the textures here. If I make this 0 0.1, they kind of go away. So I feel like that can sometimes get rid of certain artifacts that are there. It looks like a screen space reflection kind of issue. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it looks better without. It feels like there's more control if I don't use the reflections because I can control where the shadow is here. So like you see if I move this around, it's like it stays exactly where it is. But if I turn on screen space, it starts to like do some stuff. It starts to try to like, it's ta it takes the negative light value, it like absorbs the light, but then it also tries to ref refract or reflect some stuff and it gets weird. And you get these kind of like denoised reflections. So I might turn it off for now. I think it actually is easier to control the lighting in the scene if I turn it off. this I want to make a little bit smaller I think this I will make a little bit bigger is it destroying for beginners what do you mean by that EV stuff is destroying for beginners pictures or happy accidents like that can help you can try the bloom uh, it could soften some of the artifacts. I have the bloom turned on. So, not sure. Oh, you know what? We're gonna actually do this. I'm gonna move this down. I like these little parts right here. I'm gonna use them. It's like a little stopper. By the way, if I make weird, gross, uh, like stomach or I don't know, like digestion sounds, uh, my apologies. I had like food just before this, so 
I'm trying not to like be gross, but might happen. <laughs> Gotta accept me for who I am and all my grossness. Um, let's do this. Yep. And then it's gonna clip through. And that's fine, because we will just grab these and pull them out. Like that. Cool. I actually wanna add like a little thing here. Oh shit, let me turn on screen cast keys for y'all. I mean. I don't know if you're following, but I think it still like helps to have that stuff. That's not screencast keys. There it is. Cool. So I'm gonna insert this. Okay. I like that. And I don't know, it just kinda gives it a little bit more texture. You can't even notice it, you don't even notice it because it's so, like, simple. Make it bigger. What did you say here? Like, the settings with volumetrics and transparency, people can be frustrated with EV, and if their computer isn't good enough for cycles, they're disappointed. Yeah, that is true. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, if you want to make it look good with Eevee, you have to do a lot more tweaking and you kind of have to be a little bit more technical with how you're handling some of the stuff. Because it's true, like with, with Eevee, uh, with cycles, I mean, you just enable it and everything works. The lights work, the shadows work, you don't have to really adjust anything. But with Eevee, again, because it's a little bit more like a video game engine with how it's like doing all the rendering, there's a lot more like technical stuff you have to get into, which true. Yeah, it's like a balance, right? Like you want to just, you don't want to get into the technical stuff. So you just render it with, uh, with cycles, but then it takes forever. It takes ages and you're like, you know, disappointed by that maybe. But if you're rendering it with Eevee, it's, you know, it's a lot more technical stuff in a different direction. All right, so I'm gonna actually make this a bit bigger. I'm gonna do it just to a rough duplicate. I will say though, the way that I learned Blender was almost like maybe a bad way, but I learned it purely by just learning only what I needed to learn in that moment. So um, like whatever I was working on, whatever I was trying to do with Blender, I learned that in that moment. So like if I was modeling like a sign, I wouldn't learn how to model like from the start, I would just be like, how do I make a, I would just kind of like learn how to make the sign. And then if I wanted to texture it, I would learn how to texture. And then if I wanted to animate it, I would learn how to animate or like learn a very specific part about it. Not like learn animation as a whole, but like how to spin an object or how to turn an object. And one of the cool things is that like, because people are learning Blender at all levels, there's just always almost like seemingly a, a simple question that's being asked either in a thread or something like that that some some user wants to know like how do i turn on the timeline and then somebody just like there's just usually a thread where somebody's like go here turn on the timeline and so it was a lot more maybe tedious for me because if i had like a if i had if i was hyper focused on one thing i can kind of learn the different pieces on how to make that one thing but i didn't understand like texturing or uv maps or anything like that but then if i wanted to make a totally brand new scene that stuff I couldn't just copy over. I would have to learn how to like, you know, make a whole new thing. But that's why I think the best way to learn it or the fastest way is to just like keep like making stuff over and over and over again. And you don't even have to finish them. Just like make them get to a point where like you're bored with it or you're done with it or you're proud of it and then move on to the next thing. And yeah, I don't know if, that, I don't know if that's even like Hopeful, or like maybe obvious. I'm kind of distracted. That's <laughs> let's make that less. 
I kind of like that. Let's turn on the cloud. Ooh, the cloud. You hate modeling? Yeah. Honestly, it's fine. I think you can learn Blender and have a lot of fun with Blender and use it really well and make really cool artwork. And this might be like blasphemous, but you never, you don't have to learn Blender. Like there's this, there's a lot of stuff with artists and like, especially artists who went to art school because they went, like I went to art school and I learned like this very educate, like classical kind of way of making artwork. Like I started with oil painting and then like, you know what I mean? Like you do oil painting and then you bring those skills to digital painting and somehow it like makes you a better digital painter in some people's eyes. Or you can just learn digital painting as the very first way that you learn how to make art and then that's just how you make art. And you make it and you rely on the digital medium and the digital skills and technologies to make help you make art versus like mixing colors and all this like old traditional stuff. So I think there's just like, if, if you say like, I wanna be a 3D artist, but I never really wanna model, there's gonna be 3D artists who learned like the traditional way by learning like one thing at a time until eventually like learning the whole program that will be like, nah, that's not how you're supposed to learn. That's not how you're supposed to do it. But I just think that the way people make art and the way that you, that the way that you and like everybody can make art is constantly evolving, constantly changing so quickly that it's like outgrowing like, like academia or whatever, like can't keep up with it. So it's just always behind. And there's always new ways to make art. You don't have to like follow the rules of like, like look at Ian Hubert. I mean, he doesn't, he, his UVs suck probably. Uh, or like just the way he does them, like in project from view or whatever, like that's not how he's supposed to do it, right? Like video game sense, like you're not supposed to do it that way, but he does and he's made an entire career doing it that way. And his stuff still looks good because he's just doing it for whatever looks good at the very end. He doesn't care like optimizing models or textures or whatever. And so like, it depends on what your end goal is. If your end goal is to make a 3D video game asset, then yes, you have to make like optimized geometry and topology flow and like UV maps and all this kind of stuff and bake it. But if you're just doing it for the end product to be an MP4 that you can edit in like a video editing software, it just needs to look good for the camera then it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what whether you modeled that thing or you properly uv unwrapped it or whatever because it's just like a means to the next step it's not really like about that step i don't know I hope that makes sense <sighs> oh i'm sorry you did say some more stuff here uh Jean, I didn't, I didn't mean to miss your messages. Let me just check, touch up on those. The other thing that you have to ask yourself is this going to be a still. Yeah, okay. Artifacts, distracting image, you can turn it on. Photoshop, exactly. Or it's an animation. How long does the shot take? How far is it from these artifacts? I think it won't be that noticeable. That's true, yep. Hey, Max, thank you. Off to, off, off to play bald man's game. Have fun. <laughs> Imagine if they made like a Baldur's Gate, but it was like Cyberpunk. That'd be sick. Like a like a D and D style Cyberpunk. I mean, I think I might play that. Uh, let's see. I think this looks okay. Oh yeah, I wanted to add the rain. Let me see if I can pop in the ring from the last scene that we did. What was that? It was this, I'm gonna just save this real quick. This was the scene I think we did last uh, last stream. So Seti, if you, um, if you weren't here last week, we did this. We took this sequence and added, it looks kind of wild if I just hide this and this. That was this sequence that I posted on Insta. And we added rain. I got this really cool rain generator add-on. That was fun. <laughs> I didn't make the rain. The rain was from... Let me find the person again because they deserve everything that... They, they make like, um, uh, like add-ons and... Uh, 
Gumroad. So if I go here, I'm gonna just throw this in chat. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me throw this in chat. There you go. So this is Cartesian Caramel, I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, they made this quick rain add-on. It's geometry nodes. It's super nice. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's four bucks. I think it's affordable, especially if you're doing like animations that require rain because rain i think definitely should be faked as much as possible like doing volume like particle rain is insane <laughs> um oh but I, I think what did we do last time we had to copy a bunch of crap so collision rain Oh, I just, I think I just appended it because it didn't work last time doing it that way, like copy pasting it. So let me try to append it. That'll be how I have to do it. And... Where's the rain? Oh, it was in my, like, add-ons folder. By the way, let me know if the music is loud or like not loud enough. I'm fine with like turning it up if you want. It's quite on my end, but just, I don't know. Just let me know. Blender add-ons. Uh, here we go, quick rain append. Good loudness, okay. I just, I just turned it up like a tiny bit. Um, just trying to find, I think it was like the whole collection. One of the things that's been really interesting about geometry nodes to learn, and like, again, I'm like talking earlier about how I learn just only when I need to learn something instead of like learning it ahead of time and just like overwhelming myself with stuff. Um, Geometry nodes, like I've seen it enough now to the point where I'm starting to understand like generally just like how it works. And from my understanding, like you still have to make all of the assets that get like populated. Like if there's a bunch of different rocks, unless they're, di unless they're different sh sizes and rotations, you can't like, you know what I mean? Like if you're scattering like a bunch of grass or like a bunch of foliage on something, you still need to make those individual clumps of foliage so it's not as i guess super duper easy as some people i guess advertise it this is just my own understanding of it uh, so here's how the how it works it's there's a collision um i need to get rid of all this because i just imported the whole scene and all the lights i can get rid of i think so there is Collision, rain, and then the rain parts is the splash, and then rain column. And there's two rains here. So essentially it's just like this little noodle or spaghetto or whatever. The spaghetti thing is just like a up and down rain thing. I guess that's animated. And then the splash is a piece that hits something. It like collides with something. So if you put something into the collisions, it'll collide with it. So let's see, let's try. Um, I'm gonna put build, this build, building into the collisions. And if we put the rain over top of it, I think you'll see that it will interact with it. So we take this, and as soon as I move it over the you can see like, <laughs> it's cool. It's really smart the way it's made. It feels so simple, but it's actually really cool. So you can see it like, it's there. I think I have to hit play. Yeah, you can kind of see it. All right, so the volume is getting in the way. Let me turn that off. See it? Dude, this actually looks so cool. I didn't think it was gonna show up on here. That looks so good. Oh, let me hop out of the camera view and get a closer look. That's so cool. That's such a vibe. Oh, that's such a vibe. It's actually raining in real life outside and I love it. Oh, 
it looks good it's you know it's not like realistic raindrops and it's probably repeating a lot of stuff but you just don't have enough time to notice what's funny is that when it makes because of the you see how it's kind of red see how it's like red right here see that redness i think that's from the negative light that i have blasting on there and like <laughs> absorbing something it's definitely messing with the with the color of it like it looks like it's blood you see because it's absorbing i think what color what color is it absorbing blue so it's leaving red i think i don't fully understand like digital color theory i don't but that's what it that's how it makes sense to me yeah john i, I recommend getting this i think it's if you yeah I, I i used to make a ton of like illustrations actually i don't think i've ever shown y'all my uh like artwork my like 2d artwork i have it on my website but it's just i don't ever like really go to it so this is a ton of my i, I used to do like way more illustration stuff and you can see like here just rain i would always add rain to everything especially for this client just pilot rain all the time so i learned how to make rain and i have some videos on my channel about how i paint rain I learned how to paint it really fast. Stuff like this, like colorful kind of rain, adding like this this kind of distortion when you're driving on the road. Rain in here, you know, just cause here. And like I learned how to fake it to in 2D, but doing it in 3D, you know, it's just so much easier if you want to be like Especially if you want to get kind of like realistic depth, like rain depth, rain happening in the background, in the foreground, on surfaces. Like this one is, this one was a lot of just like painstaking, zooming, zooming in and like almost on a pixel level, just at putting in the edge, putting in the rain. Yeah, yakublevart.com. That's my website. So I don't, I don't, you know, this, it, I would just kind of paint based on what looked right. Not, if not exactly like what's the most accurate thing, but, um, if I had, if I, I could make this in 3d now, I could probably recreate this cover. We should do that. We should do that for a stream. I, I would love to do that. When I was learning blender, when I was learning 3d, I was taking like really rough sketches that I did and recreating them in 3d. So. If you're a 2D artist going into 3D, I really recommend this as a great way to learn. So this is my early 3D stuff. It's like really, really simple. Like I made a phone. This was Cinema 4D, by the way. I made a phone, you know, whatever, simple. I made like the little isometric office that everybody makes these. This was like kind of my office at the time. Not, not really, maybe like more like what I wanted it to look like. This is Blender. This is uh, when I got the Starlight add-on. I started messing with it. Um, so let me, yeah, so like you can see all this 2D stuff I did. I did a month where I made artwork every day for just one month. That's like the most I could do. And I don't even think I finished. I think I did like 28 or something. And I did these, like I started to get into this habit of making just really simplistic kind of graphic art using the lasso tool, painting. And I have some of my earliest videos um, some of my or some of my earliest videos on my channel you can watch are just like me painting in this style sorry let me let me uh catch up on chat <laughs> just get i'm just going off on a rant um music's good okay good good yeah i'm behind cartesian caramel is awesome indeed uh it's so many free things yes i he, he made like really cool uh light trails that i got for the for the bike that i I can't wait to use that. I just got it because I just needed it. Um, it's good anime. Yeah, yeah, anime style of rain, definitely. I think you could even pass this off for like live action too. Like if you're, if it's like, you know, in the background, like it's not out of focus, I think you could get past it. Or you can at least have the template and you can swap it out with more realistic style, um, with a more realistic style of, uh, you know splashes and stuff because these look a little generated but you could probably just replace these with like particle frames or something i don't know um
I'll add you. Where is that your profile? Um, you mean like add me on socials or something? What do you want to add me on? Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's my website. My Insta is the same. My Insta, like my all my socials are the same name that I have, except for like I don't really use Twitter. I have an account on there, I just don't use it. Art station. Again, I have it, but I don't post on it. Like, I think there was a period where I was on every platform because I was like, oh, this was a, this is a great way for me to, you know, whatever, get work. But ArtStation, I feel like I just never had success on there. I never get comments. I never whatever get. I only get like DMs that are like spam. <laughs> it just doesn't work for me in the way that it seems to work for other people. Um, but I, you know, if you, if it works for you, use it. I just, I don't know. I feel like inadequate or something being there compared to everyone else. It's such a, it's such a weird website. It's a, it's kind of like you're putting your artwork right up against like some of the best artwork out there. And it's just, sometimes it can be inspirational, but for me, maybe it's just me and my mental, but sometimes it oftentimes doesn't feel inspiration. It, it oftentimes just makes me compare and then I feel bad. Uh, Yakovlev art. Yeah. You got an X there, but Yakovlev art. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Uh, but yeah, I want to do a stream where I recreate some of this stuff in 3D. Like this, I think would be really cool to recreate. This was Death Stranding, like fan art. What's really cool is I did this one just for fun. And then I did this one later. This was just using the round brush only. Dude, Kojima retweeted this on Twitter like years ago. And it blew up my Twitter. It was like, but it was a shame because I just never use it. And also he retweets like every single day. So <laughs> it got lost in the, it got lost really quickly. You'd have to scroll through like a thousand tweets to find it. Um, yeah, this artwork I did, this was also like, I think I did this on Twitch like five, six years ago. And I made this because I was huge into Titanfall. And then I made this one. And then I made this one. And at the time, all right, sweet, John, happy to hear that. At the time, this respawn was just doing something cool. They were doing like a thing on Reddit where they said like, hey, submit your fan art. And in Titanfall, you can get like a little banner for, for where your gamer tag is and then a banner of like a bunch of art. And they put this in there. They put this one for, I think, Ion. And they put this one in there for Scorch. So yeah, that was sick. I, I mean, that was just amazing. I mean, I, I was just like, wow. And now they have now they follow me on Insta. Because at the time, they weren't as big as they were. They're now giant because of Apex Legends. But if you go to Apex Legends and Respawn's Instagram, you'll see that they follow me. It's pretty wild. Because I made this artwork like a long time ago. And... It's just, you know, I'm a fan. I love it. But I think it'd be fun to even create something like this. I think it's like I, I would make paintings like this. I would use the lasso tool and just really make make ba basic geometry. And as you can see, it's kind of like scratchy and scraggly and just kind of using color and light to, to define the image. And I think I just carried on to my 3D artwork. Kind of relied on like that kind of using light and shapes to tell you like what you're looking at and then i i just brought that into my 3d work and i think that's what i'm kind of going towards again with the akira stuff like silhouettes simple shapes but like this this image this is just to me like such a powerful image but i think at the time, I painted this, and there was no, I never thought that I could, I would ever get into 3D, and that I would be able to remake this in 3D, or I would even be considering doing that. 
but now I think I could and I think that would be pretty easy and we can animate it and just I'm think I'm looking at this and just imagine like the depth that you can give this image you know this would be a ton of cloud stuff a lot of volumetrics like how would this look I learned how to paint light and glow and bloom and give it all this kind of color uh, I have an image here here I just kind of you can get a better idea of like how I learned how to paint light or like a really emissive object and it would be cool to recreate that you know like this would be really easy to recreate in 3d this is like, like a continuation of the other one it would just be fun to try to recreate these shapes because these are the shapes that came naturally to me when I was painting with the lasso tool and in Photoshop but it would be in, now now it's interesting to try to recreate these and these shapes deliberately whereas before they were just expressive shapes but now I'm like you know meticulously trying to recreate them so yeah highly recommend doing that if you're like a 2d artist take your simple sketches your drawings and recreate them in 3d but i think it'd be really cool to take some of the more complicated stuff that i've done that's 2d and recreate that in 3d i think that'd be really fun and i think that'll look really cool all right so where are we with this oh are we good are we okay Okay, let me let me just give it a second. <laughs> Alright, we're good. Oh, that's cool, the light is being the light is coming onto the rain. That looks really nice. I might bring it even closer. Kinda like it. Actually, let me go to the camera view. Yeah. Oh, I kind of like that. Like it's kind of getting caught there. I like that you can kind of see the rain more. Hmm. Damn, that's so interesting. <gasps> that looks sick. That actually looks kind of cool. I didn't mean to bring it so close. But I love how much of that is getting caught. It's like the, the back... That looks so cool! It's the back and forth of the shadow and the light fighting. And you and you were getting this really interesting gradient. Wow. See, if I do too much, it gets weird. Like, it gets like purple and shit. But also, it's like... Look at this texture. That looks like a... Like... I don't even know what you call that, like, like the sketchy. <laughs> that looks kind of cool. Yeah, if you have the time, I know Sita, you were, like, Seti, you were saying how, like, it's frustrating. But I think you, I think it's worth the time in just playing. Just get it going in Blender and play. It's, I know that it can feel like a waste of time and you can be like, oh, I'm not doing anything. It's like... But I think it's worth, because look at this, we just discovered like this weird broken texture. And like, yeah, it's probably a glitch, but you know. This is kind of why I think I decided to start streaming because I sometimes will do shit like this where I'm like kind of wasting my time in a sense. And I'm just like experimenting and like kind of learning stuff and seeing what looks cool. But I figured sharing that would be good, too. Oh, I think I know that video. Were they painting, like, on the normal map? Like, Max, hey, that guy's insane. Yeah, I had to, I had to, I gotta, like, I like, I like following really good artists, but like I was saying about the art station stuff, like, sometimes I just see too many um, too much good art and I just be like all right I gotta stop looking at this because I'm gonna start feeling like bad I'm gonna start feeling like shit if I keep looking at this work because all I'm, I'm just gonna inevitably start comparing myself to it so I had to take a break from like looking at Max's stuff a little bit because I'm just like bruh he's insane uh, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit When I'm ready, I'll start looking at his work again. <laughs> oh, I wanted to, I think, 
expand it, maybe? Yeah, expand it. So then, covers the screen more. Like that. It's a little bit too crazy looking with the, uh, it looks a little crazy with. There was something about the rain. We can adjust, was it direction? No. There was something, I think it was direction. Yeah, ooh, I like that. Oh, is it randomness? Yep. Want it to be a little bit more straight. Straight it out. That's cool. Damn. Dude, this part right here where it passes the light. That looks so cool. That looks so cool. Let's see, does it, does it reach the edge? I might need to spread it out some more. Yeah, it's, it's over there, okay. Just double checking if it's making sure it's everywhere. That looks so cool. I like this more. Let's turn on, let's turn on the cloud. Yeah, the teapot. That artist is really cool. And he, like, kind of like what I was just saying, he, he started doing that by just he's a i think he's a painter like a digital painter or a traditional painter one of those and he was just like trying to bring those textures into blender and then found out that he could paint on normal maps and then that just changed it that was one of the things that i was always like really envious of other artists like ian hubert of course like how are they like figuring out all these cool methods to do stuff they're like I don't know like they're so they're so smart they know how to push blender and like how to push things but once you kind of give yourself a time you just dedicate like an hour or two hours to excuse me to just let yourself play and like what happens if i make this a negative value like it's usually a positive value what if i go into negative value or what if i make this like an opposite color than what it normally is or what if, like, with the camera for this Akira stuff, the camera was, I've never gone to, like, 100. What is the camera length right now? 120. I've never really had the need to go to 120, but I'm like, what if I do, what would that look like? You know, I'm usually doing, like, 24 or something, or 22, like, how you were saying, uh, like, Max Hay kind of looks like that. Like, his stuff is super wide angle, and that's usually what I was doing. But then I was like, you could do 120, and I'm like, oh my god, that's, like, the complete opposite but it still has like a, a look to it. So it sounds silly, but sometimes going into Blender and the fact that it lets you like go in extremes can be a really fun like time to experiment and just like, you know what I mean? Like I think it was in Unreal Engine the other day and I was trying to go into a negative value on the light and I couldn't, like it just wouldn't let you do that. So, you know what I mean? Like it's cool that Blender is just so flexible in that way and i think that is what allows it to be so like versatile for like, versatile for like a lot of different artists and people who come from different backgrounds right exactly it's it's like it's more freeing than i think most artists are afraid that it is like you can, if you're a 2D artist and you don't want to learn 3D, you can almost use Blender as a 2D artist and you can bend it and use only the tools in it that benefit your 2D or that make that work in a way where only where you understand it as a 2D artist. You don't have to look at it and understand it as a 3D artist, not fully. I mean, yeah, you know, you're moving around in 3D space. But there's a lot of other aspects to 3D art that you don't have to learn or understand in order to like get the most out of it and get benefit out of it as a 3D artist, or as a 2D artist, I mean. That's why I'm sometimes hesitant calling myself a 3D artist because I will, without hesitation, take a render and bring it in Photoshop and keep working on it. Um, but I, I have the confidence to be able to do that in 
in 2D, but I don't know if I have the confidence to do that in 3D to like, if I needed to look a certain way, make it look that way in 3D. I don't know if I have that confidence. I'm gonna see if I can move the rain. Cause the camera moves and the rain doesn't. And I wonder if like moving the rain will like create issues or will it just be unnoticeable? So we'll move it here like that. And then we, it would move back like that. Let's see. Because the rain is already moving, you can't really tell if it's like the whole thing is moving or not. I don't think it should make a difference. Uh, Jean. Yeah, like, dude, you're, you love drawing and perspective buildings and all that jazz, which takes a shit ton of time. Use the 3D setup, blocking your shapes, and boom, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, I think I think still, man, there's a lot of 2D artists that they see that as like a shortcut. They see that as like, I don't know. There's like basically an ego in like doing things the hard way and like succeeding at them. Like, oh, you used 3D block out for that. I just, I used a ruler and like whatever. And it's the same result, but one was a little bit faster and yeah i don't know it's, it to me feels like a very old school way of like thinking about how to make art and how to be creative and how to express yourself and express your ideas there's just like yeah i think that is like what is it it's like a it's like a toxic artist kind of mentality like how there's like toxic you know masculinity and all this kind of stuff there's like toxic artist or artistry where it's like you got to do it the hard way and you gotta you gotta do it the way that like the old school people did it i don't know it's silly there's there's just still i think what it is is there's some i'm still finding 2d artists that are like anti 3d and i just feel bad for them because you know they like you know your artists are so hard on themselves to make art a certain way or to do it like a way that is whatever that the community thinks is impressive and trying to make art in a way where the process is impressive i feel like is just like the, the, the wrong thing to focus on like you want the final product I think the final product to be what is impressive or what is like, you know, giving you some kind of emotional reaction, not the, that, that's just me. It puts less, less pressure on the artist to do it a specific way and puts more, in a way, puts more pressure on the artist to just like express an idea or like present a, a result. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's more interesting. And I, I react more to that. Okay, something's going on here when this thing goes out. I gotta disable grabbing the rain because I will just keep grabbing it. Let's see. And also this. I can grab that through it. Okay. Does something happen? Okay, no, that looks okay. I'm digging the rain. I'm digging the rain. Yeah, man, you press this little like triangle thing. Sometimes it's not there. So if you click on this funnel up here, it lets you restriction toggles, I guess. It lets you select and deselect what you want to see. So if you only want to see like the checkbox, it'll be like that. And this is a holdout. I don't know what that is. I've never really used that indirect only. Interesting. Um, so if you have this enabled, you can just click like that and you won't select it. That's been super useful. Um, the holdout is good too. Also, I didn't know this, but like you can just search for like empty or like light here and it will only show you the lights. So you can just press like A and select all of the Okay, for example, that's not a good one. Let me do 
area. So all the areas are selected here. If I hit A, it will select all of them. And when I X out, okay, let's well, select it, all the other stuff. Let me do this again. I'm, I've never like used this this way, but I think this will work. So if you hit A and then you X out, it has like only the, the light selected. I don't know, just I guess if you ever have a ton of stuff that's not organized and you need to select something, you can do it that way. <laughs> what do I think of, um, let me see. Yeah, if it saves you time, do it. I'm all for it. What do you think of the text to 3D like something or trying? Something worth trying maybe? Is that what you're saying? Text to 3D? Oh, like, like AI art? Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? Text to 3D? Or text to art? for some reason, I'm not sure why. Density color? Ooh. This is something, oh snap. Damn. Color might be something we gotta play with. <sighs> Love that blue. Love how it looks more blue. Cause it was just kind of white before, like really bright. But I kind of like it looking a little bit like pinkish. Dang. Also screen space reflections, maybe. This wind this on the right thing looks weird. Like I don't know what building what's going on with this building. It's got like no windows. Or I think it's the glass that's being weird. Uh, it's got no glass, that's weird. Uh -huh. Got something. Oh yeah, it does have something. Yeah, that's the glass. Oh, it's Fresnel. It's doing weird stuff with the Fresnel. I mean, it's got good texture, but it's not working for what we need. Let's figure out what's going on in here. What if you just mute all this? Looks a little bit better. Is it opaque? Any alpha blend? Okay, looks better. But the roughness looks bad. Let's do a color ramp. Let's just override all their stuff. I don't know what they got going on here. Because it had scratches and shit in it, that's why. Right? Yeah. And screen space? Okay, there we go. That'll that'll do what we need it to do. I think. Okay, yeah, you can start to see it a little bit. Ooh, that looks really cool. base color. Hmm. We don't even need displacement. I don't know why that's there. Just eat note. Wait, this is the light? Why is there emissive? That's so weird. Ooh, 
looks cool. We can like see it a little bit more. But it's the opposite of what we want. Let's see how that looks. Uh, that looks a little bit better to me, I think. This light might need to be adjusted. It's a little bit more blue. We can mess with it. Do we want that there? Ooh, ooh, that's what we needed to do. We need to change the color of it. That looks better. And then there's one thing, Sadi, if you uh, were curious, I've learned this messing around with it. Turn off the shadows. That really helps with, when you go in the negative value. Because what it's doing is it's inverting it. So all the parts that would be shadowy are like brighter. So that can look weird. But if you turn that off, you just get pure like a shroud of shadow to put onto your object. So yes, very good to know about that. It's a little bit harsh, I think. Yeah, it's like creating this really harsh thing, which I don't know why. Is it the angle? Also, custom distance in EV. I don't know. I don't think that you can do this in cycles, but you can do custom distance, which means like how much does the light travel like across the surface? And if you decrease this, like if we decrease this, you can see it's like fading out. So that's another thing that could be helpful. I'm gonna be having to hop off soon. I have to head out, hanging out with some friends, but uh, just giving you a heads up. Um, I don't know if I like the line. I think that might be something to do with the windows, but just like, because they're just like flat all the way around, it's not like a perfect circle or like a cylind cylinder. And I kind of don't mind it. Wait. Hold on, I want to try something else. There's something about reflections because I think it might be reflecting the light or something. So if I go to the glass, um, is it this? Something about, um, it might be a, a, a cycles thing only. I think in cycles you can change what, how the material reacts to light. Um, that might not be a thing I can do here. Or wait, there's light linking, right? Isn't that something? I haven't messed with light linking too much. And that might not be a thing here. Wait. Experimenting. Experiment mode turned on. Oh. Is it this? I know this passes. I think light linking might be a... It might be a um, 4.0 thing. Well, I'll, I'll mess with that at some point, I'm sure. Not this time. What up, Corey? Good to see you, dude. Thanks, man. I'm glad you did it. I got a procedural rain and real puddle from Blender Market. That's cool. May, um, Blender Guru did a really cool video on how to make like wet puddles. It's really cool. I, should, I recommend you checking it out. Hmm. What up, Alexander? Good seeing you again. I'm not sure if I can get rid of that it's super dark, which I think has to do with the intensity of it. Yeah. 
don't know, it's kind of graphic. I kind of, I don't, I don't hate it. It has like a graphic element to it. Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. I'm, I'm honestly cool with it. It's just one of those like artistic-ish compromises versus technical knowledge of how to resolve something. I don't know, I think it looks kind of okay. It's luckily like for the most part kind of behind the rain. Let me see if I can grab the rain and move it up. Oh, we're gonna have to adjust the... This is gonna pop back when we play it. Oh no, no. Oh no, wait. Yeah, it did, okay. Um, I'm just gonna adjust it to be a little bit more f forward, like away from the building. Here. Location. Hey, thanks for subscribing. Bishoy. Bishoy. I'm not at that level where I can like read people's names seamlessly. <laughs> so I apologize if I butcher your name. I just call you Bish. Bish? Bish? Who do you think you is, Bish? I'll get it eventually. Doesn't that look so cool? I just love watching this. Loving the, watching the little, little raindrops form. <laughs> Looks so silly. But I wonder if I can change their scale. They're a little bit too big. Let's see. Is there like a raindrop? Splash size, there we go. All right, thank you. Heck yeah, that's it. Oh damn, you can make the rain thicker. Look at that, that's really interesting to see how it looks. How it's been like cut. Oh, I kind of like that. You can make it thinner. Damn, this part right here where it hits the little highlight. That looks so good. There is something weird going on with the negative light that I have casting again. It's creating problems. We might have to see if we can like adjust it. Here. Well, hold on. Can I just make this not accept shadows or something? Uh, shadow none. Screen shadow none. Um, I don't think I can because it, ha it might not even have anything to do with this. Shadow? No. Uh, I think this is just above my pay grade. I don't think we're going to solve it. Not here. This just probably is a... Like a... Uh, yeah, it, I think it's just because I'm like just not using Blender the way I'm supposed to use it. So it's like I'm breaking rules. So for me to unbreak those rules, I have to either break rules further or. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's not going to work the way we want it to. I mean, I could, I could like adjust the texture of the buildings to just make it darker, but I don't want to do that. When we look, when we start using 4.0, I think this will like not be a problem because I'll be able to link what takes shadows, what doesn't, and then we can start breaking EV again. Yeah, you know, in a way that like is actually helpful. Helpful. So we'll leave this as is. Looks good for now. Damn, looks so. I like this. We, we fixed like the little reflection. It's still screen space. It's not perfect. Um, I bet if it was like cycles, you would see it a little bit more. Actually, can I adjust the intensity or how much the screen 
space reflection stuff works. I never really mess with the settings here. I don't know what that's doing. This is how I learn Blender. What does that do? No idea. Ignore it. <laughs> Delete it. <laughs> and then it just breaks. Uh, let me turn this music down. It's a little bit loud for me. Okay. Flutz. What a Flutz. Good, good, good having you. Thanks for stopping by. Um, where were we? Yes, intensity. Oh, that's bloom. Whoops. So let's learn how this works. I think I remember messing with this at some point, like a long time ago. Looks like it adjusts shadows. Ooh, that could be helpful. That could be really helpful. Thickness. So it looks like it just goes up to like a certain amount. I like that, actually. That kind of helps. Edge fading? <gasps> Wait, is this how we get more reflections? Nah. Clamp? I don't know what clamp does. Can't see. Edge fading. Oh, I don't hate that. Oh, yeah, I kind of like that. It was at zero, wasn't it? Thickness, X roughness. Oh, interesting. So it's doing something here. Oh, I kind of dig it. Let me see if it's a, if it's like making a difference anywhere else. Oh, I see. But I don't want it to be super rough. No idea. I'm just gonna reset it. Uh, I will turn the thickness up though. Oh, I, interesting. Look, look here. I mess with the thickness. It's doing something. Oh, it's like a, it's like a portion where it can reflect. Because if it's like really high, it doesn't reflect. If it's really low, it doesn't reflect. It reflects like a portion. That's good to know that that's what that's doing. I, I I don't mind it like right there. It's just it's purely screen based, so it looks okay. I might want to turn the rain up. It's a little bit rain column. I might put it emission. Yeah. You gotta turn up the emission on it. Make it a little bit more blue. Hey now, wow, it looks kind of insane. It kind of, it, it helps us here. Because it, it overpowers the, like, how red it was. And I think it was red because it was, like, a more yellowish color. So if we push it in the opposite direction, it, like, cancels out. I think this might be a little bit too intense, though. Yeah, now we can put this back to where it was. And it's not like a big deal. Ooh, it's a really dark. Um, let me do negative 100. That's what the other thing with the area lights is that it, it, it becomes kind of like a circle where it influences like the it, from the center out. So it, it is a little bit harder to control that way. It's not like a flat, even area. So even if you like make it wider, it doesn't make a difference. Or bigger, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't matter. See, it doesn't matter. It does it's not it's hard to get it to reach like both sides. Sometimes what I do is I will just duplicate it. So I have one here. And if I wanted to reach this side, all I do is just you know duplicate like that. And then just you know, it's a little bit more like a broken way, but you know, it kind of works. Let's grab this. Bring it down. Oh. 
Bring it down a bit. I like it. Uh, let's turn on the other volume. We had another volume here. Yeah, and this I think we'll have to adjust as well. Like this volume is good, but it's doing something with that. And I think there is a way to adjust that. Um, I thought there was. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's that light that's catching that light right there. Don't want that. And there's something weird with volumetrics and EV where like it sees the light through the object. I'm not really sure why it does that or how to fix that, but it's okay. Yeah, you see, like it's really weird. I wonder if it's like a fog thing. Or you know what it might be? It might be a, uh, like an anisotropy thing. Yeah, because like that, it doesn't really see it. But then if you go all the way, it kind of like focuses on it again. Got rid of it. Did it? If I adjust this, yeah, I'm okay with that. I mean, it made it go away. I think that's all it did. I just turned it off. Yeah. I don't mind this. I like this. The rain is so sick. I love that. Hmm. I might want to adjust this though. Ooh. Wow. Oh my god. It's so like pink. Whoa. Damn, this is sick. The volumetrics also get weird around the negative value lights. It gets really weird there, so I gotta be careful with that. Damn, this looks sick though. I love how like soft it makes it. It makes it look so like, I don't even know. I just love that. Probably should stop messing with this because that looks fine. Damn, I love this color combo. Like the purple and the blue. Such a sick combo. I want this part over here to open up a bit. Ooh, it's very, very dark. This is, I think, kind of how I had it before. I like this. I'm going to keep this. But I do think this light is creating issues. Might have to just move it. Yeah. Uh, like that, it's not. And I actually think that was cool because it puts like a little rim light on this stuff. All right, I think we can make it work with this light. I think that works. Yeah, because it's like putting a little bit of light on this on the side here, which I like. But the volume is starting to hide the gloominess of that shape, which might not be helpful. 
Oh, that's good. I just found like a little opening in the volume. Or it's not like, yeah, like that. Yeah. I want it to not be like interacting with that as much. Maybe like that. That looks good. That looks good. Yeah. Sick. All right, I'm saving that. I'm gonna do a test render, just take a look at it. This, I think, might be a little bit, this light might be a little bit too strong again. I don't know, it's just, I. it's too dark over here. Like, I don't like how dark it is. Like, I like, I'm fine with this being super dark, pitch black. But I'm not totally fine with this being super dark. So maybe like that. Also, I think it's because it's blue. It's white. It's different. It's dark. That looks okay. I'll plug it into a hue. Saturation value and just bring down the color value. Like that. So I like I like it darker because it adds like more value depth, but I don't like it too dark. Like that. Or is that too dark now? Too dark. Alright, I think we're good here. Let me do a test render of this shot. Do I use nodes a lot? Um, I think for like the shaders and stuff, yes. No, but I don't. I don't use them like in a very like. I use very basic stuff. I use them like a two D artist. Like I need to turn down the color, or I, I'll use a color ramp, or I'll use a curves, or I'll use a hue saturation. But when it comes to a lot of the math stuff. Uh, what about for textures? You mean like procedural textures? Um, again, I keep that pretty simple. Usually, usually just noises and stuff. But um, I don't know too much about like normal, like normal node. Like you know, it it's a lot more like visual stuff. So like for example, I think the most I'll do is I'll combine a couple texture nodes to make a very interesting like roughness pattern. But I don't fully understand how to control that if I wanted to like do stuff. All right, see you, Jean. Thanks for popping by and chatting. So it was always good having you. I think I'm gonna turn down that light. It's a little bit too bright. Minus 50, minus 20. Oh, that's the second light, that's why. bigger like that I think that like works about that whoops let's see if i can just use this to get an overall darkness to it like that i think looks good yeah All right, let's check that out because i'm digging this all right cool that's better Compositing, I don't. Let me see how it looks with that. Ooh, that even looks better. I love this part. This is like, I don't know why, but this is so like soft and cozy to me. I think I'm gonna go with this. The fog glow needs to be high. Yeah, it was creating weird artifacts. 
Damn, the rain is so sick. I want to make it a little bit brighter. It's a little bit too dark. Um, let's see, where's the rain? Rain column. It's a little bit too bright. Mission color. Yeah, I like that more. Rain rarity. Oh, it's like how how dense it is. Right? Yeah. That's cool. I think I like that more. I think I don't like how dense it was. I do like it a little bit light. Now let me adjust the um, direction. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's like 3D. Whoa. Oh. Wait a second. Look, check this out. If you had it like upside down, you can make some sick ass. I think it's going to flip because I don't have it. Um, let me just go here and get rid of the keyframes. But if it's upside down, it's going up. That's kind of cool. And like here, it probably doesn't make sense, but okay, now hear me out. This is like super specific. You have like some like either uh, other world, event happening where the rain is going in reverse, which would be kind of sick on its own. But for some reason, I'm thinking of like, I don't know why I'm just thinking of Dragon Ball Z. I'm thinking of like Dragon Ball Z and they're like, going Super Saiyan and powering up and you know when like Goku goes like Super Saiyan 2 or 3 or whatever and then it's like and you see like rocks and stuff floating up and like lightning and shit if there's if it's also raining but like where he's standing the rain is going in reverse that'd be so sick I don't know why that'd be so sick <laughs> that would be so fire if I saw that Somebody needs to do that. If I don't do it, somebody else needs to do it. I mean, I, I don't know if I can even get to a Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z type stuff, but that would be so sick. I like Dragon Ball Z is too reliant on characters and I just do not, I can't do characters and I don't have the ability to either find good models of it. It would just be impossible. It would, it would have to just look how they look, but recreating some of the other stuff in 3D would be kind of fun, I think, like the capsule stuff or like some of the environments that, I mean, it could be cool. It's a little bit less traditional in, in, in terms of like the design architecture of it. It's not like just blocks and stuff. It's more like rounded stuff. But I don't know. It would be cool. I love Dragon Ball Z so much. You know what I could really model easily? The interior of the hyperbolic time chamber. I can model that in like two seconds. I can model that on stream. <laughs> it's just a white void. Oh, is it splashing still? It is. Okay, good. Okay, I thought it wasn't splashing. Oh, it wasn't. It was moving last time. That's why. Okay, so let's double check our work here. Location rotation at 300. Needs to be here. And then it moves back. Cool. Oh, this looks so sick. I'm gonna increase the rain rarity, I think. I like when there was more rain. Damn, I wonder how much you can go up on that. Oh wait, I mean, go down, go down. Dude, what? Ooh, it's a fucking downpour. Damn. But you can almost see like the streaks. I think it's just making like children or something. You can just see the streaks, it's intense. Let's turn that back up a bit. And rain length. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that's really nice. That might be I, I, even better, I think, for like the scale. Um, Let's turn this up a bit. This is so cool, like it's cool to see, to learn more about this add-on and how to use it. I think this looks kind of better, like especially here. 
I've, I'm a sucker for rain that passes a light source. Sucker for it. I could look at something like that all day. And right here, there's a part. Where is it? Here. Just how it lights up. Oh, I love it. So good. It's so sick. There's this artifacts over here, huh? Oh, it's just Z fighting. Speaking of which, Dragon Ball Z, Z fighting. I mean, you gotta have really disgusting textures if you're making a Dragon Ball Z scene, just for the Z fighting. You gotta have that. Animated Kamehameha. Animate a fucking spirit bomb, like crushing a whole like landscape. That'd be cool. I've always wanted to like, I think I talked about this last stream with the um, like animating uh, Evangelion stuff. I la you should check out the stream from last week because we I showed a bunch of stuff from Evangelion and I was like just losing my mind over it. Just the intensity of the battles. It's it's very much like Dragon Ball Z to me. So this one's a little bit more pink. I like it though. I think if we take this and make it more blue, it might be too blue. It's a good kind of blue, it's too blue for me. I like it being a little bit, ooh. Ooh. It like just any any color works good, looks good, I think. I like this a lot. I think I am gonna change this color though, to be, I think we did like a pinkish. Yeah. And then we did like, that was blue. I think we keep this like a reddish. Or was it pink or was it like, I think it was like more, was it like yellow? No. I think keeping it kind of like a white looks better. It's funny, like, it's so funny because when I made this animation the first time, I had so many people reach out to me like, yo, can you do this for like my brand or can you do this for my stream? Can I like, I love your, your building renders. Can you just like put my name on it and like, like post that? Like, and to me, that just felt like such a not interesting job. Like, it's like, I don't know. I don't even know what it's like so simple. It's such a simple, like, I'm not saying it's simple for me. I'm saying it's so simple for them. Like, yo, look at this amazing thing you did and it's very unique and creative to you. Can you put my name on it? You know what I mean? Like that just feels so dirty. And it, a lot of those jobs, I was just like, nah. Cause it's like, what is the benefit to me to doing that? Like, okay, they can, they'll pay me a hundred bucks, but like, you know what I mean? It's not worth, like, it's just such a, it's like, you know, pay me to make something unique to you or to you. That's what I would like to do. I like doing work when I can make something unique to the person or to the project. I do, what I don't want is I make something of my own that's like whatever, interesting to me and successful. And then you, all you say is, yo, just put my name on it and like re-render it exactly as is. Like, no, that's so boring to me as an artist to work on that. And that's just so like shallow for you to ask for that. So yeah, I just, I got a lot of those requests. It was so lame. And I still kind of get requests like that. Like some, some, some completely unrelated thing to me or to the vibe or to anything is like, Hey, I run a nail salon. Can you put my brand, my logo on the building and then render it? And like, I'll use that. Like what? You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I'm just too like emotional with my art, but I want, I like making artwork that is like talks, that talks about your story and your like product, not like just put it on. I mean, I, I even had some people that where it did kind of make sense. $100 is $100. I'm, I guess in a position where I, you know, I, I don't, I don't need it like that bad, a hundred dollars. 
at least it's not worth for me to sell out like my artwork in this way i will still do like um like if i i get if i get some freelance work and they're like hey make a custom thing and whatever like here's the pay like i'll do it i just i don't like sticking somebody else's name on my work and then just like calling it theirs you know what i mean i don't want to do that um but yeah i've i've taken jobs where it was 50 bucks 100 bucks like all the time um i used to freelance for like 10 years so i still freelance every once in a while and if a project is really interesting to me like if i like if a project is really good and i'm really interested in it i will take it like it doesn't even matter if the price is high or if it's free if it's really interesting to me i will do a job like it's fine i'll do it for 50 i'll do it for 100 i'll do it for free if it's really interesting to me um because i just have a regular ass job now i just have a day job so like i don't need to kill myself for every single job or i don't have to like take every single every single project that comes across in my dms because like yeah i don't know like once you start doing freelance work you will start to realize what kind of people just want to like especially like I don't, this is such a weird thing because i have i've recently gotten this massive following but before that i would have never gotten a dm like that where like a year or two ago i would have never gotten a dm where somebody's like yo can you put my put my name on your artwork and i'll give you 100 bucks like nobody would do that i think part of that request a lot of a lot a big part of that request is because of my like massive size so it would just be like they're almost like paying me 100 not even really for my artwork but more for like promotion essentially and it just feels like dirty because it's like i don't even care about your product i don't care about you it has nothing to do with me so like that i think is more valuable to me like me promoting your thing on my account is more valuable to me I hope that makes sense i hate fiverr i have one though yeah i was um i don't know if you're in the discord but there is a conversation about fiverr about how like it's really really low rate like the rates are really really low in there i've come close to making an account on there but i never did just i don't know i i don't know i just never never got there i just luckily i just never had to like do that but it's i think because it's international it makes it even harder to compete with because like different amounts of money like a hundred dollars for somebody living in california is like nothing but a hundred dollars for somebody living in like literally like anywhere else like in another country like um in like fucking russia or ukraine or like any any but any place like is way more like the the conversion rate is higher um so like you're competing with people who will just take less so it's like because the, their cost of living is much less and so it's really hard people there are so scammy you mean like the artists or like the clients or both <laughs> i think i want to render this out this looks nice to me the rain is a little bit mm, i feel like i could use some work and I think I might increase something to make it a little bit, maybe the column width or the, what was it? Is it width? Oh, that's kind of nice. Oh, uh, no, that's a little bit weird. There's something to bring length whoa no 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 but i think that does help cool um adjust the direction yeah it looks better I love that okay i might want to add like another building here but i don't know i'm kind of okay with it i might move this back maybe move this closer yeah i think moving it closer is better it like pushes it back and also yep that's better i think that's what, what i should have done because now more of it reflects and also um 
like yeah I think that's actually better I'll keep that there actually I think that looks better should I move this building too <laughs> it looks so crazy that it moves like while the camera is moving I might move, move it up a bit just to kind of make it look a little bit more crowded I do like this part though, with like the... With the cables hanging. Hmm. I'm gonna bring it way down. Ooh, that's kind of sick. I like that part. Little letters. Oh, interesting. Actually, I dig that. I'm keeping that. It's like you... <gasps> the way that came in looks so fire. Whoa. Damn. The way it's like rising. Like... And then you see the top of it. Damn, that's sick. Alright, I think I'm going to keep that. Yo, that looks really cool. I like this. I like this more because what I didn't like was this left side just felt empty. But now there's like this reveal of a bunch of stuff, I think it works much better. Oh, that's so good. Okay, yes, this is exactly what I needed. This is it, because there's some detail here, there's some detail here. That looks so sick, and it like looks giant, which is part of the whole effect. Damn. That looks so sick. I want to adjust this thing one last bit. I want to just move it down maybe. Because I, I, I like how you can see more of it. And I think we can even... Let's see. We can bring it a little bit more um, around like the buildings. Ooh. Okay, hold up. I think I like that. Yep, I like that. All right, so we're gonna go with this. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this render out when I hop off stream. But both it happened to me so often where I texted the client for a week and he like I texted five people and when you're out. Oh, I see. Is it like they were just getting a, a rate or a quote from a bunch of people? That's yeah, that's that does suck, but that does happen often. Sweet. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna render this, and uh, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you for thanks, yo. Thanks, uh, CD, city, 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 city. I think it's city. I think it's city. I think I think that's how I remember it. Thanks, uh, thanks, bro. Thanks for uh, hang hanging around all the way to the end. It's awesome, and thanks, you know, to everyone else. And if you're watching this, the, the vod later, thanks for coming through and uh, checking it out. Make sure you catch the next one live if you can. If you want to like, if you want to make sure you're not missing like when I go live and stuff, Insta is probably the best place because that's where I just like, I'll make like a little countdown over there. But uh, yeah, actually, let me make a little. Teaser. Oh wait, let me go over here. I gotta press play. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. The rain. There it goes. That looks actually kind of fire. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. All right, y'all. I'm gonna post this on you know, my, uh, my socials after it's done rendering. So if you want to catch that, just, you'll see it there. But, um, other than that, yeah, thank you for coming by and I will see you maybe next week. I'm going to try to maybe stream either tomorrow or next week. Yeah. All right. Peace out.